It's a dark and stormy night. Inside their home, Jim and Lyle Parker, father and son respectively, load their shotguns. The sound of an animal roaring can be heard. The Parkers step outside and walk towards their barn. Lyle enters a stall to check on a horse. He steps out of the other side to see one of their to see one of their prized cows, Bessie, who had so much to live for, slaughtered. Lyle sheds a tear for poor Bessie. Jim takes a swig of his whiskey and then hears a terrible growling sound. A giant beast jumps out of nowhere, swiping at Lyle before knocking him backwards and out of the barn. Jim raises his gun and squeezes the trigger. Blam! The beast falls as Jim goes to assist Lyle. Once they've collected themselves, they look back towards the beast, but all they see is the figure of a Native American man lying in the barn with a shotgun wound to his chest. Yes. Oh! <laughs> I really thought oh, it was gonna yes. be the adventures yeah. of uh, Briscoe <laughs> County Jr. Okay. There was no sound effect. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't know that one. You know, Briscoe County Jr. X Files, it's all the same. I, I caught it <laughs> about halfway through. I caught the, the X Files. It's... All right. Oh, oh, oh. Who's excited? Oh, hell yeah. If I'm not the smoking man, I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I figured making this one an in canon, <laughs> uh, you know, greater mythology one was oh, I not, not the best idea. Exterior, dirty farm day. Mulder and Scully walk with the Parker family towards the barn. Jim Parker is trying to hide the fact that he's been drinking since the event occurred 13 hours prior. I, I'm not a killer. I, I never meant to hurt no one. But I'm tired of my cattle being butchered 100 miles from the slaughterhouse. That's the fourth one this month alone. And who or, or, or what do you think was responsible? Look, look mister. The cow looked like a piece of paper that had gone through a shredder. I, I, don't, I don't know. No animal that could have done that. Then are you saying that a person or persons was responsible for this? Up rushes Jim's lawyer, David Gates, who is suffering from a cold and obviously annoyed his drunk client is talking to the FBI. I want to remind you that Mr. Parker is free on bond pending trial. He's willfully speaking with you solely in regard to this incident and <coughs> not about any other pending litigation. So we can't talk about Mr. Parker's federal court case against the Trago Indian Reservation? That's exactly what I mean. Now wait a damn minute. David sucker punches his client in the stomach, <laughs> knocking the wind out of him. Jim, don't say a word. <coughs> no. No, this, this, ain't, this ain't time for that lawyer crap. I want to get this out and open. You people, you people think I went and killed me an Indian just because we're having an argument about where my land ends and their land begins. As Lyle speaks up, it's clear his voice is still growing through puberty, even though he's 20 years old. We want to settle that peacefully in court. <laughs> in court, I says. Well, Joseph Goodensake is dead with a wound from your shotgun to indicate otherwise. All I'm saying, it was, it was, it was, it was no kind of animal that I know of, but it damn well didn't seem human neither that night. <laughs> Take a look at my boy's scars. It was dark. We heard a growl and we went out there to protect the cattle. I, I could have swore I saw red eyes and fangs. I thought my boy Lyle was, look, nobody, Nobody was more shocked and upset than I was to find out it was that young Indian boy. But, but if he was the one that was killing our cattle, I'm, I'm very sorry that we had to find out about it that way. But as far as I'm concerned, that's the end of it. For your consideration. After a brief moment, Mulder farts loudly. Can we see the corral? I'll take you out there. They step outside a sliding glass door. Agent Mulder? Yes? A Agent Scully, I suppose if, if I were hearing our side of the story, it might not hold up too well. Parts I, I don't understand myself. Things my father can never try to explain to a stranger. Lyle realized this was because his father sounded like Nick Nolte in the mid-90s, but he didn't elaborate. What kind of things? 
for the last few months, whenever we go outside at night and check on the cattle, never saw anything out of the ordinary. Not a mountain lion, not a coyote, not even any tragos, Agent Scully. But I could feel it. Something not human out there watching me. The air was more still, the night animals more quiet. It was like nature herself was terrified. It gave me the grapes. Mulder stops and pensively thinks for a moment. Despite being on the Trago reservation, he assumes the Trago is a kind of bird. The creeps? Yeah, the crepes. Don't you ever get the crepes? Scully shrugs while Mulder slowly smiles and raises his eyebrows as if he knows something. They leave Lyle and walk together to the area where the crime was committed. The victim was shot there, about three meters from where Parker fired. There's no way he could have mistaken a person for an animal. It's open and shut, Mulder. You know, I'm surprised you volunteered for this assignment. Any bureau agent could have investigated this reservation homicide. Why are you interested? Scully looks around the barn and sees a pile of late 70s cosmopolitan magazines with the cover model's eyes cut out, a full-size guillotine, and an open box of sex toys with blood on them. She glances past all of them. Well, there seems to be nothing unexplainable about this case. Nope, not a thing. He pulls up a large condom, bigger than any condom he'd even seen. <laughs> ever seen before. It's so big, in fact, they don't even realize it's a condom. Mulder, this is odd. It's almost like a snakeskin that's been shed. I suspect that the Parkers knowingly killed Joe Goodensake, but they hardly seem the type to skin their victim. Besides which, police and coroner's report make no mention of such back. Mulder notices dinosaur tracks leading out of the barn. Well, we're gonna have to take a look at the body ourselves. The body's been transferred to the reservation authorities. We're supposed to get in touch with the uh, Sheriff Charlie Toscani. Exterior, reservation bar, night. Mulder and Scully drive to the local barn grill, hoping to track down the sheriff. They walk up to the bar where a dog is sitting by the cash register. They address it. Excuse me, uh, we're not from around here. We're looking for Sheriff Toscani. The dog barks once, then lurches off its chair and lumbers through the back door. Not a very helpful dog. Anyone? Uh, anyone know Charlie Toscani? A voice comes from the old man in the corner of the room, wearing an eye patch. This is Ish. Go home, FBI. Go home, FBI. How'd you know? I could smell you a mile away. Well, they told me that even though my deodorant's made for a woman, it's strong enough for a man. A record scratch. All the patrons of the bar look at Mulder before breaking into sudden hysterical laughter. They agree. It's a good joke. I was at Wounded Knee in 1973. What I learned in fighting the FBI is you don't believe in us and we don't believe in you. I want to believe. Why are you here? What are you looking for? I think you already know what we're looking for. You tell me what I know. We're looking for any individuals who might be able to provide information on the homicide of Joe Goodensnake. We're looking for anything that can create human tracks in one step and animal tracks in the next. Parker, he found what you're looking for. He killed what you're looking for, FBI. A young woman playing pool yells loudly before slamming down her pool cue. This is Gwen. What Parker and his kid killed was my brother, and you're all too afraid of some stupid Indian legend to do anything. I hate it. Gwen! And I hate suits who are always here when they need something from us, but when we need help, they're nowhere to be found. Gwen storms out, right as a tall man wearing a badge walks in. It's obvious this is the sheriff. Sheriff Toscani, I'm Agent Scully, and this is Agent Mulder. Good snakes bodies in my office. Exterior, <laughs> sheriff's office, night. As Mulder, Scully, and the sheriff near his office, a couple of bikers in tight leather, handle, uh, tight leather and handlebar mustaches block the entrance. Bill, Tom, let him through. Come on, boys, let him through. Who are they? Guardians of the dead. They escort the deceased spirits to the new world. I only let them as far as the front door. Anybody that knows me knows that I keep the ancient beliefs out there and the police work in here. The woman in the pool hall said that people were afraid of some Indian legend. What do they believe happened in the Parker case? Look, I'm not a park ranger here to answer all your questions <laughs> about Indians. 
Whenever I need federal help, I never get it. Since this case falls under the jurisdiction of the FBI, you're entitled to examine the body. So let's get over with it. Let's get it over with. Interior examination room continuous. Was the woman in the pool hall his sister? Gwen, she and Joe were primarily responsible for fueling the boundary dispute with Parker. They felt that he had been grazing his cattle farther and farther onto the reservation. Parker probably told you it was his idea to settle in court. Joe and Gwen filed the suit. Mulder pulls the sheet off the body to reveal a small green alien. They all look around, confused, and Mulder replaces the sheet and moves to the body laying next to it. Mulder takes the body sheet off that to reveal a man's body that has three lacerations in the middle of his chest. Take a look at that scar tissue. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he'd been attacked by an animal as well. Could Joe have been attacked also? Maybe the Parkers did see an animal. No. Those wounds have been healing for quite some time. The shotgun wound indicates point blank range. The pellets entered the body in a single mass. The assailant couldn't have been more than three feet away. Mulder, not paying attention, is wiggling a loose tooth in the front of his mouth. We're gonna need to take a look at Joe Gooden Snake's dental records. Scully lifts up the mouth of the body to reveal fangs. Interior <laughs> examination room later, Scully and Mulder look through the dental records. See, these are the canine cuspids. They're normal. Well, could his records have been switched or misplaced? No, you see, the second incisor here is chipped, just like the ones in his mouth. These match Joe Goodensnake. Mulder realizes he's not getting new teeth tonight in size. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are cases of calcium phosphate salts developing abnormally with age, but... That could account for what Jim Parker claims to have seen. He was out that night expecting to see a mountain lion killing his cattle. He gets rattled, and the flashlight beam catches Joe here. So Parker saw what he wanted to see, an animal. Lyle Parker was attacked. He has scars just like Joe. Do you have a facility where we can perform an autopsy? Why? Well, if Joe's teeth are abnormal, an autopsy might reveal abnormalities in the interior of his anatomy as well. <laughs> I can allow that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Can't allow that. Scully strips off her suit to reveal she's say. wearing she's wearing a full medical gown. I'm fully qualified. <laughs> Get no, that right. I, I can't let you do an, auto an autopsy. The funeral is tonight. It's a cremation. After that, we'll have nothing. Tragos believe that the recent dead are unsettled by their new condition of spirits. Any desecration of, body angers, of the body angers the spirit and keeps it haunting this world. Mulder continues to look around, confused. But you're a law enforcement officer. You can't destroy evidence. Don't tell me what I can't do. Native Americans believe that their law is greater and more, than, and more just than that of the U.S. government. If they want Joe at rest rather than used as a piece of evidence, that's the way it's going to be. If you want to make it out to be an issue... Uh, your higher authority, go right ahead. Sheriff, do you believe that the spirit of Joe Goodensnake is in that room? All I know is tomorrow, day after, you're going to leave. But I have to stay here. I've got to answer these answer to these people. You can continue your investigation, but you're going to have to do it without Joe Goodensnake's body. Exterior, Native American burial ground, day. Scully and Mulder sit in a car while they watch Joe's funeral and cremation. Mulder, since we've been here, you've acted as if you've expected to find every piece of evidence that we've come across. What aren't you telling me? Why are we here? True piece of history, Scully. The very first X-File. Initiated by J. Edgar Hoover himself in 1946. Mulder pulls a file out of his pants. <laughs> During World War II, a series of murders occurred in and around the Northwest. Seven here in Browning alone. Each victim was basically ripped to shreds and eaten as if by a wild animal. However, many of the victims were found at home as if they were allowed their killer to enter. In 1946, police cornered what they believed to be such an animal in a cabin in Glacier National Park. They shot it. When they went in to retrieve the carcass, they found only the body of Richie. They found only the body of Richard Watkins. Sounds like the Parker scenario. A murder stopped that year because the cases were unsolved and considered so bizarre. Hoover locked them away, hoping that in time, 
People around here will forget about them. Scully glances at the file, realizing it's just a comic book. Still, she humors him. <laughs> this file indicates that they started again in 1954. In 59, 64, 78, and now again in 94. But Mulder reaches back into his pants again. Here it comes. <laughs> Before pulling out another issue of his favorite comic. These animal man related murders predate the oldest X file about 150 years. Members of the Lewis and Clark expedition wrote of Indian men who would change their shape into that of a wolf. Mulder, what this folder describes is called lycanthropy. It's a type of insanity in which an individual believes that he can turn into a wolf. I mean, no one can physically change into an animal. How can you just dismiss the evidence? The tracks in the mud, the shredded skin, a man with the teeth of an animal. Mulder, even if you're right, and Joe Goodensnake did somehow have the ability to transform physically into an animal, he's dead. Jim Parker shot him, and in a couple of moments, his body will be burned. End of mystery. Let's hope so. They exit the car and move closer to the funeral, moving up behind Gwen, who is choking back tears. You don't belong here. Gwen. You're only around to wrap up your investigation. I just wanted to say that I'm sorry about your brother. I feel sad for anyone who loses a part of their family. A part? He was my whole family. I'm it now. As a demonstration of sorrow, I'm supposed to give away all my brother's possessions. Gwen hands Scully another blood-covered sex toy before also <laughs> producing a bracelet with claws on it. Gwen, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm... It's no big deal. He had more possessions than friends. Gwen leaves before the cremation starts, but Sheriff Tuscany walks up. I read the port of your investigation into the goodness may come inside. It was good. Very thorough, professional. But what I want to know is off the record. What do you think really happened? Well, your explanation, Agent Mulder, is lying on that burial platform. Why don't you just accept that and go home? Sheriff, do you believe in shape-shifting? This is a funeral. The funeral pyre is lit, and Lyle Parker slowly approaches as Gwen continues to walk away. She, sh she sees him, as do Mulder and Scully, and begin making their way towards him. Get out of here! Please, I just want to show my respects. I don't want your respects. I want your heart to grow cold. I want you to feel the way I'm feeling. She pulls out <laughs> an ice pack that she had attached to her shoulder and puts huh? it down Lyle's back. He shivers violently. <laughs> I think you better leave, Mr. Parker. Lyle wriggles the ice pack down and grabs it and gives it back to Gwen. I wish your brother could be here. I wish that more than anything else. Lyle hops on his horse and gallops away. Exterior, dirty farm, night. Mm. Jim sits alone I'm on dirty. his porch, drinking whiskey and smoking a cigar. He pulls out a copy of Cosmo and begins that to cut dirty. out the eyes of the cover model, <laughs> drooling with arousal. Perhaps he should retrieve another toy, he thinks, before hearing a wild growl in the background. Jesus. Before he can grab his shotgun, he's violently attacked by a huge beast who claws and slashes him as he screams. <laughs> Exterior, dirty farm, day. <laughs> Later. Dirty morning. <laughs> Sheriff Scani and Scully investigate the murder of Jim, looking over the scene, while Mulder tries to catch butterflies in a nearby field. <laughs> By the way the body's been mutilated, I'd say he's been attacked by a large predator or someone wanted it to look that way. Do you think this is retaliation for the death of Joe Goodensnake? I don't know. Have you talked <laughs> to Gwen Goodensnake? She seemed pretty upset last night. She's gone. Nobody's seen her since her funeral. I put, a, I put an APB out in her. And what about Lyle Parker? Can't find him either. Lyle is actually laying on the ground, naked and shivering, directly in front of them. He raises a trembling hand to show he's <laughs> present. No one notices. <laughs> he could be dead as well. I'll take a look around. Scully begins to walk away, then trips over Lyle's body. Meanwhile, Mulder approaches, while once again retrieving something from his pants. This time, it's a giant gloop of hair. <laughs> That's not from any animal I've seen. Sheriff, I think it's time we had to talk. An exchange of ideas. Mulder... I'm taking Lyle to the hospital. He's suffering from exposure, and when he's been checked out, I'm gonna question him. 
She leaves with Lyle, and Mulder turns his attention to the sheriff, who has been backing away through the entire conversation. <laughs> what are you hiding? Uh, I thought it was over. Over? Is that why you wouldn't allow an autopsy on Joe Goodensnake's body? You thought it would all end when he was cremated? What were you afraid we'd find? I can't tell you. <laughs> Take it to somebody who can. Interior, hospital room, day. Scully sits by Lyle's Parker, Lyle Parker's bedside. I'm ashamed to say it after what happened after the funeral. I picked up some bourbon. <laughs> and, I <don't, laughs> and I don't remember a thing after that. Sometimes when I'm down, I go out to where me and my dad keep stray animals that wander in on the ranch. <laughs> I just watch them, you know, helps keep things in perspective. Anyway, my mom, when she was alive, was the one that started keeping those animals. I get to go out there and have a think about her, too. <laughs> God, I must have been really wasted to run around there naked. You must have thought I was one of them animals. Lyle is still actually completely naked, lying on top of the bed sheet, <laughs> sipping cranberry juice from a straw. Scully diverts her eyes. When you did go home, did you talk to your father? No, he'd have been mad. I even went to the funeral. I, I having an image of him sitting on the front porch, but I don't remember talking to him. Why? Your, your father's dead. I'm sorry. It appears as if he's been attacked by an animal, but I suspect it may be homicide. Lyle, I lost my father recently, and I know how overwhelming... Was it my fault about going to the funeral? Did it anger them into killing my father? <laughs> it's not I, funny. I, I don't want to know. know. I can I deal know. with death, you know, living on the ranch, being close to nature and all. You see how it all works. Things are born, things die, everything else falls in between. But if I caused it, I, I brought it on, I, I couldn't, I, 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 <laughs> Lyle begins to cry, spilling cranberry juice all over his still naked body. Interior. Oh, I could do without that last, that last noise. <laughs> Interior, Isha's house, day. Mulder and the sheriff have visited the elder's home, where he's resting in a lazy boy with his legs kicked up. <laughs> I saw it once with my own eyes. It was a long time ago. Seems like a dream. I was a boy. In 1946, <laughs> the Watson's case? I sense you were different, FBI. You're more open to Native American belief than some Native Americans. You even have an Indian name. Fox. You should be <clears throat> running Fox or Sneaky Fox. Just as long as it's not <laughs> Spooky Fox. Tell me it. What did you see? Watkins had been attacked by an animal when he was alone in the woods. His scars healed. He was forgotten. Then the murders began. The Tragos then realized that Watkins had been attacked by what the Algonquins called the Manitou. The Mantua. The Manitou. <laughs> An evil spirit capable of changing a man into a beast. To be attacked by a Manitou was the victim to the call. That's what I said. <laughs> What did it do again? Could you, could you describe it one more time? <laughs> the, the what you said? The, it, was a, it started with an M? A manitow oh. overtakes a man by night. Oh, by night. Not by Every full night. moon. But when its bloodlust builds to an uncontrollable level, a man changes to a sickening creature. It kills, releasing the savage energy. The man returns to his true self, unaware of what had happened. <laughs> The cycle begins anew the next day. This continues until death. The healed scars on Joe Goodness' body. I got it. Ish pulls out a blunt, lights it up, then passes it to the other man. <laughs> Mulder inhales deeply. One night, when I was six years old, <laughs> I was coming back from fishing at the Cut Bank Creek. And there was a shortcut behind Watkins' house. There was a groan. Not animal, but not human. I looked into his window. He was covered in sweat and blood. He was a great, great pain. His arm, his skin, ripped. 
It tore up and filled the floor. Claws sprang from his fingernails. He turned, screaming, and he saw me. His eyes, his <laughs> eyes were still human. <laughs> they begged me to kill him. If I had been hunted and had my gun, I'd have done it without a second thought, but I began being a boy scared to death. I ran away. Mulder looks down at the blunt, wondering what it was laced with. <laughs> Shortly after, <clears throat> the police killed him. But the man of town rose again. Eight years later. But with Watkins dead, how could there have been an attack <laughs> by Manitou? Manitou. The Watkins. M. The I don't know how to pronounce it either, really. Watkins had a son. Could be passed along by bloodlines. Gwen, if Joe Goodensnake was this creature, then perhaps it didn't originate in him by the first attack, but was handed down through the bloodlines. This means Gwen could have it also. Gwen could have killed Parker. A loud rumble is heard out front, and Mulder and the sheriff both pull their weapons. They walk out the front door where Gwen has gotten into Ish's car. Gwen! <laughs> Gwen gives them all the fingers and violently fishtails out of the gravel parking lot. Unfortunately, she loses control of the car, and it rotates to run directly into an electric pole. Oh, no, no! <laughs> hey. hey, you're under arrest, Gwen, for stealing Ish's car. What happened, Gwen? What are you running away from? I saw it. I, I saw it kill Parker. Let her up. I went there after the funeral. I was going to mess up the kid, and, and so I waited. But, <laughs> but Parker was on the porch, and then, then this thing, this animal. Oh, my God. I've never been so scared. I ran, and I hid in the woods all day. I wanted to get out. I, I wanted to get out of here. I, I wanted to get out of here. Oh, God. <laughs> Bring her inside. Oh, it's... Interior hospital, <laughs> hospital room day. Dr. So Joseph sits in a room looking through the patient's personal belongings of all of his patients. <laughs> He's startled <laughs> when the phone rings. Hello? This is Dr. Joseph? Yeah. This is Agent Mulder with the FBI. I was told I could reach out to Agent Scully at this number. Oh, yes. We released Lyle Parker from the hospital and she's taking him back to the ranch. So I can reach her on there? Uh-huh. They just left. Agent Mulder. Is there something I feel you should know? I re <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. I mean, maybe. Why don't you Hold tell on. us There's... what you want them to know? I'll, I'll, I'll tell Hold you on, what guys. you want to know. Hold on. Please. I'm trying to talk to... <laughs> Agent Mulder. There's something I feel you should know. What's I that? A test performed on Lyle Parker, and there's something rather unsettling. Cut to the chase, Dr. Joseph. Traces of his father's blood type. It can only be there by ingestion. <laughs> <laughs> Exterior, dirty farm night. <laughs> Scully approaches the farm as Lyle lays in the passenger seat, pretending to sleep. He opens his eyes slowly without Scully noticing and looks her up and down. He closes his eyes as they approach the house again, and she reaches to wake him up. As they approach, they realize it's entirely dark. Power's out. Yeah, happens all the time being out here in the sticks. I'll, I'll fire up the generator. <laughs> Interior dirty farmhouse continuous. Kyle, Lyle and Scully step inside. <laughs> but then suddenly Lyle's bowels create a disgusting sound and his feces splatters to the floor. <laughs> you okay? I feel a little sick. Uh, please help me into the bathroom. Scully tries to keep away from him, but begins kicking Lyle in the direction of the nearest wash closet. <laughs> <laughs> Exterior, dirty road, night. M Mulder and the sheriff race down the road towards Parker's house. Mulder pulls out a banana and pretends like it's a cell phone. <laughs> Damn, it keeps disconnecting. The man must be blocking the signal. How much further? About seven miles. Mulder throws the banana out the window. It was of no further use. Interior, dirty farmhouse, continuous. <laughs> Strange sounds begin to come from the bathroom as Scully stands wait outside. <laughs> Lyle? <laughs> Lyle? Let me come in. Lyle, I want to take you back to the hospital, okay? No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll be all right. Lyle? <laughs> Lyle, answer me. Lyle, are you all right? 
Interior, dirty bathroom, night continuous. Lyle rips off all of his clothes and begins to change into a giant beast. But as he does, finds the box of extra large condoms that's awaiting near the sink. <laughs> Interior, dirty farmhouse, continuous. Like a fucking mugwai. Scully <laughs> under the door looks under the doorway to try and get a glimpse of Lyle, but only sees shuffling, hairy feet. <laughs> With a Super Saiyan yell comes from inside the bathroom. A oh, furry God. paw busts through the top of the door. She screams. <laughs> she screams and falls backwards down into the night. <laughs> Exterior. Dirty farm night continuous. Mulder and the sheriff pull up hastily, draw their weapons, and enter the house. They barge inside. Interior. Continuous. Scully? They try the lights, which then come on. For some reason, Mulder then turns them back off, you know, for the move. <laughs> Mulder sees a dark shadow and begins to chase it wildly through the house, firing his weapon wildly and flailing it childishly as he tramples around. He accidentally shoots Scully in the arm as he rounds a corner. It's okay. It's me. It's me. I don't know what happened. Something jumped me downstairs and I lost my gun. I heard it. Come up here. Come on. Despite bleeding from her arm, Scully follows. Right behind them, the giant beast walks quietly, making strange faces at them. Suddenly, the sheriff flips on the light and the beast freezes. Mulder and Scully turn around, and seeing a large beast, laugh. <laughs> East reflexively smiles as well. Mulder pulls out a Polaroid, and they take a selfie with it. Okay. Suddenly bullets rip into the beast, and the sheriff uh, opens fire from the doorway. Uh, uh, you all right? <laughs> they glance over to the beast, but instead it's just Lyle's naked body lying there. Oh, oh my god, he was in the bathroom. Sick, and then... The next thing I knew, we were attacked by the mountain lion. Mulder pulls out the selfie Polaroid they took to reveal the beast and the two of them all smiling. It wasn't a mountain lion, Scully. Exterior, Sheriff's Office, morning. Mulder and Scully exit the office eating donuts, along with the sheriff, preparing to leave town. Where's Gwen? She said she'd come see us before we left. Yeah, she left last night. We all of her possessions to her friends. Just pulled up and left? Why would she do that? Brother's gone. No family. Trouble with Parker's all over. Maybe she saw something that she wasn't ready to understand. Maybe. Thank you. Thank as you. The so much. As the sheriff walks back inside, <laughs> Ish walks up with a baggie full of the super cush Mulder had smoked <laughs> with him previously. Mulder was happy to have a new hookup. FBI. See you in about. Eight years. I hope not. <laughs> Mulder and Scully get into the car and drive away. Oh, yes. <laughs> I believe. Well, you want to believe. I believe. No, but now she does. I would like to say thank you to all of our players today, and thanks. This is the uh, season one, episode 19, ep uh, episode of the X-Files called Shapes, often considered one of the worst of the entire series. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to Matt Schink. Thanks to Beth Wilson, Mia Radabaugh, Nick Santa Croce, Paul Mamolito, Nancy Dickinson, and R Ryan Alexander. This has been Rect Reruns, again.